If you are starting your UGC journey from scratch, from zero, this video is for you because it will be my ultimate guide for UGC creators to get started. Now we can start a video on UGC without defining UGC. So UGC stands for user generated content. Now, when I worked on the brand side, I would hire creators all the time for UGC, but we just didn't call it that back in the day. UGC is just a style of content. Now think about it this way. If you were scrolling on TikTok and you see a video that comes on your feed and it's really jarring, it feels really highly produced and that it's like typically an ad, you're probably gonna just scroll by it. Versus if it feels like an ad that was created by a fan or a user, just like a normal person, then you're a little bit more receptive to taking that, right? So let me show you guys like a visual example. So this ad right here on Facebook, it's clearly for a beach tent. And this is a perfect example of UGC content. Like this was created most likely by the user, right? It looks like it's just a normal family was probably paid to create this. You see the kids, they're using their shovels, they're in the shade with the tent. I mean, this is not high production. This is probably even shot on a phone when you think about it from a production standpoint. But that's what you want. That's what resonates with people, right? So this is just to give you a visual example. This is what we mean by user generated content. And the best part is that you don't have to have a whole bunch of followers or any followers at all to pitch these types of services. Now let's ask ourselves, why Nina? I thought I needed followers. No, you don't. Remember, if a brand is coming to you or you're reaching out to a brand and you're saying to them, hey brand, like I wanna shoot videos for your ads, for your newsletters, for your website, for your social media presence, what does your follower count have anything to do with it, right? It does not. So this is why when we talk about pitching from a pitching standpoint, which is on the list of today's video, when you start reaching out to brand clients, that the follower count just does not matter. Now, first things up, if you're gonna wanna shoot UGC content, you're gonna need equipment. But again, this doesn't have to be fancy equipment. You just need something to film with, right? So whether you're filming with a smartphone, um, I have a lot of creators who are making UGC content from their phones. Cause again, it gives that feeling of just a normal person creating it, right? Um, there's some things that you're gonna wanna take into account is obviously if you have a smartphone, do you need a phone holder or a phone tripod? We have a few that we recommend on our Amazon shop that I will also link for you guys if you need something to hold your phone. You may wanna consider a microphone if you're doing talking head style UGC. Um, I personally love this new DJI mic that I purchased. It works for all my short form and my YouTube videos and it blocks out all the noise when I'm outside. So that's also linked to my Amazon shop. Um, and I'm using it right now, as you can tell. The idea here when it comes to equipment is you don't have to be fancy. You don't, you can use your phone, you can also use you know, a nicer camera. But the one thing I do wanna explain with UGC, if you're pitching to a client and it's gonna be shot, you have to also identify it if you're shooting it horizontally or vertically. And a lot of times clients will want it uh, vertical because they're looking for that phone experience. So that's why shooting on a really good phone and investing in a phone is a great way to go as well. Now, the third thing we're gonna to wanna to talk about today is researching. So you have your phone, you have your equipment, but then you're like, what type of content am I gonna even shoot? So research is a fundamental part of UGC because again, if you are producing content that is social media specific, you wanna create content that is trending or that resonates well. So you actually wanna go in on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you think that this content's gonna live for your brand partner and see what does well, what's happening? You know, and there's always different trends, right? Is it text on screen? Is it vlog style? Is it testimonial style? Is it before and afters? Now, we recently made a video that does a bunch of screen shares for UGC style of content, especially coming from the brand's perspective, like what type of content brands love. That video, go ahead and watch it after today's video. Um, if you need visual examples of what I'm talking about here, of what styles of videos to shoot. The main thing when it comes to research is just making sure that again, it's timely, it's relevant, and that you're even keeping a folder on your phone, however you wanna get organized. I have Instagrammers who have you know, a folder on their Instagram and they just save videos that they think do well because they wanna recreate these style of videos in the future. Now, a big part of UGC, because again, we're walking you down, we research the video. Okay, we're like, I wanna do a testimonial style or I wanna do an unboxing, right? 
Now you gotta, you know, you just wanna get up there and turn the phone on and be like, okay, what do I do now? You wanna get organized. So this is kind of the pre-shooting phase, right? This is where you're either writing out your script or planning out your shots or saying, okay, think about the storyboard of the content. If you're gonna be doing an unboxing, do you wanna move the camera around a few times? What's your vision for this unboxing? Are you talking? Is there going to be music over it? Get kind of thinking about this before you shoot. So again, you're not just showing up and being like, all right, what do I do now? Right, so planning those videos out, especially in the beginning when you're getting started, is super important. And it's not just planning the video flow, it's also planning your hooks. Like, is it gonna be a text on screen hook? Is it gonna be something that you say? Is it a movement? You know, you're jumping into the video frame and that's the hook. Those are things that have to be thought about in the pre-planning section so that when you go to shoot, it all runs smoothly. Now we actually have over a hundred hooks that we have collected here at Sidewalker Daily that we are going to give away. But here's what we're gonna do. We're only gonna give it away if this video hits 100 likes. So make sure if you do watch this video, give it a click, make sure you like it. And if we get 100 likes on this video, I'm gonna give you guys in my YouTube community page a link to download over 100 hooks for your content. So let's see how that works. All right, so now you planned your script out, you planned out your hook, and it is time to shoot. So what are some things to consider, right? So obviously lighting, so important. Um, a lot of creators love natural light, which means having the light, you know, come in from behind the camera. So for example, where I'm sitting right now, the light is behind so that the light is on my face. If you're using natural light, you can just go ahead and put that phone or camera right by a window. So funny enough, and we have this on our Amazon page, I just have like these little suction cups um, that are on the back of the my phone that I use to shoot my short form. And I literally will just suction cup this phone to my window because then I get all that beautiful natural light. So it's a simple, weird little hack, but it works and it allows me to do get ready with me's um, or shoot any of my social content when I wanna use natural light. Um, like we said, lighting is important, audio is important, having a steady hand. So that's why we do recommend different phone holders or mini tripods. Like I said, I have my two favorites linked in my Amazon shop. But again, you can just put your phone, have a little tripod on your desk, it makes your job a lot easier. Now, once you shoot the content, you guys already know you're gonna have to edit it. So figure out how are you gonna be editing this? Are you gonna be editing it on your phone? Are you gonna be using a tool like a cap cut? or another uh, app that's gonna help you trim and edit this video at text on screen? Are you gonna edit it natively inside TikTok, inside Instagram? So again, figure out your editing process. But here's where it gets fun because once the content is produced and once you have an example of a piece of UGC content, then you have a piece of content for your portfolio. Yay! Your portfolio, guys. And as you can see, I got really excited there because to me, we are not making money without a portfolio. Creators in my program, no. The creators that are making $5,000 brand deals, $10,000 brand deals. Shoot, I just had a UGC creator make $150,000 last year, just shooting UGC. I had a creator just do a $20,000 UGC deal, a $30,000 UGC deal. So I see this happen all the time. And that ain't happening without the portfolio, right? Obviously without the content, but like without having this portfolio to pitch to partners. So that's why where we're at right now in today's video is so integral because you're gonna wanna take these videos that you're shooting, whether it's your testimonial style or your vlog style, whatever that UGC content looks like and put it in a portfolio because we need this tool to pitch. It is a revenue generating asset for you. Your portfolio will make you money, right? So this is why you need one so desperately. Now, if you are a creator that doesn't know where to start in this pitch process, a little lost with pitching, a little uncomfortable, a little nervous, a little insecure, or just straight up unclear. Come to my next free live training if you can make it. I host them all the time and we really debunk pitching. We make it simple. And if you can't come to a training, you can always work with me one-on-one -on -one as well. And I can jump in there and help you with your pitching strategy and game plan. Now, in terms of your portfolio, you can make one on Canva. You can have it on your blog. I've had creators build out portfolios on different portfolio websites right? Where, you know, I had a creator even just have a Vimeo portfolio because it was just all video links. The idea here is to place your content in an easy way for brands to be able to navigate and digest. Now, I'm going to be very truthful here. Social media is not your portfolio. 
unless you set up a separate account just to be portfolio items. Now, what do I mean by that? The reason it's not your portfolio is because if you're on Instagram, it's like the brand would have to scroll and scroll. Nothing is labeled. They can't see your drone content or your underwater content or your testimonial style or your before and after, whatever. They can't navigate it. Like on social media, it's just one big feed. That's not what you want. You want to make it easy for the brand to get to your content. So that's why I say you need a portfolio and social media is not enough. Now, an important thing for all creators to know is whether you're starting from scratch, zero, you should not be working for free. Now, let me break this down for you, okay? You are creating content, which is your time for a brand. Why would you not be compensated for your time? I know that seems weird, but like, why should you create a video that a brand can use on their ads or on their website to make money from and you not charge for it? People tell me all the time, well, Nina, I wanna just build my portfolio and get logos for my media kit or, you know, all those things. And I get that. I always think there's exceptions to the rules, but we always wanna start by sending brands our rates, our packages, you know, putting together a proposal for them. We wanna shoot for the moon. And then if you have to settle on gifted, you know, that's a choice that you will have to make as a business owner. But again, what I teach creators in my Pitching a Brands Master Course, which is our signature program here at Sidewalker, is how not to settle for less, how to negotiate for more, how to price yourself, how to sell your services to your brand partner. So again, if that's a stage that you're at in your creator journey, you may or may not be there yet, but if you're ready to start charging, which you should be from day one, but you're ready to start pitching, Go ahead and take a look at our Pitching a Brands Master Course. It may just be exactly what you need to get started. With over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of testimonials, this program is by far the most comprehensive program, I would say, in the entire world, you guys. That's how confident I am with what we put together for you guys. So if that is something of interest to you, pitching, UGC, go ahead and take a look at that master course. Now, another big part of UGC, guys, we talked about like all the little steps creating your portfolio pitching, but don't forget the back end, right? Which is following up, joining potentially a community of other creators to keep you accountable, to keep you motivated. You guys know the saying, your network is your net worth hanging around other UGC creators, going to conferences where you can meet brands and other creators, build your network. There is a whole world out there for you guys. The creator economy is valued at over close to $450 billion in a few years. We are literally hitting that $500 billion mark. So this is no longer a hobby or no longer for fun. This is the real deal. And you are not too late to join. This is the perfect time to get started. The industry is just going up. It's never going back to the old way. So again, I'm really excited about this space and I hope today's video was super helpful for you guys and is going to help you get started in your UGC journey in 2024. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Fuel my fire. Tell me if it was helpful, what your favorite part was, and I will see you guys in the next video.